Hi, I'm Jan Doyle. Welcome to Wise Talk. I am really happy to have three guests today on the show, and you're going to be very excited when you see their work. The person sitting right to the side of me is Lisa Kuchara. She is an award-winning photographer, and she's also co-chair of the NECCC program. Uh, next to her is Lee Veris. He is a phenomenal photographer, and he has books out, and he's going to be doing programs, and we're going to have a chance to chat with him. And right beside him is his wife, Bobby Lane, who is outstanding, and you're going to be very excited when you see her work, too. So welcome all to the show. Thank, Thank you, Jan. Thank you. So uh, Lisa, let's start with you. Uh, we're going to be talking about NECCC. What does that mean, NECCC? NECCC is the New England Camera Club Council Conference. So it's a three-day immersion into photography. It is uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, where we have over 65 different programs, lots of different speakers, hands-on events, photo opportunities, walkabouts, like a complete immersion in photography. A lot of people make it like an annual tradition, but about 30% uh, of our people are first-time so we welcome photo enthusiasts of all different types as well. Yeah, I think we have a slide that gives the information about the uh, when the conference is being yes. held this year. And we also have a composite of all of the speakers. Now, Lee, I just see your picture with the hat on. You're very <laughs> easy to spot. Yep. And Bobby, I'm looking for Don't you. Oh, oh yeah, red middle. hair. And Lisa, are you speaking during? I, am I see speaking you as well too. So. What is the class you're giving? I'm giving a class on urban exploration photography of rusty things. Oh, good. <laughs> so um, so NECCC, as I, you said, is an immersion. And if people want to know more about it, we have a uh, show dedicated just to that. And they can yes. go and look at, that. look at that. But today we're going to talk a little more specifically about some of the speakers. And we're going to start with Bobby Lane. Uh, what is the name of your program at NECCC? Uh, the program that I'm teaching is called Portraits with Flash, Simple and Effective. Great title because it already captures my attention with simple and effective. <laughs> and we're going to talk about a couple of the images. And the first one that comes up on the monitor is going to be something that you'll explain to us. But what what is the key thing for simple and effective? Well, m almost everybody has a flash and very few people know how to use it. Mm -hmm. And if they That's do true. use it, they don't know how to use it well. So I always talk about the direction, the quality, and the depth of light. And it, these are really important, whether it's natural light or flash. But this is learning how you actually get to use it, control it. And I can show you how to put the flash on camera and using modifiers and a few other techniques, make beautiful light instead of it. You know, we all know what flash yes. on camera yes. looks like. It's like it's terrible. So I can show you how to make that look really beautiful. The other thing we do is we get this, the flash off the camera and using a, a radio remote to, um, to trigger it. Uh, we can then control the direction of light as well as put attachments on it to change the quality. So it gives you then the opportunity to create any kind of light that you want so your pictures become much more powerful, much more effective, more flattering. Whatever it is you want, you now have the control. It's not that hard to do, but you need to learn the steps to get there. Well, even taking it back to very to the basics, I think for myself, people are so used to the red eye from a flash, and that sort of challenges them to move forward. Right. So we'll, we'll look at some of the images that you have on the monitor in a half a second, but um, I like the idea of what you're saying. Now here we have uh, some portraits. Explain those a little bit, please. Okay, this is, I, I love to put these two pictures up because you can see that the quality of light is really beautiful. Their skin is gorgeous. It's going to be hard to believe that thou, those pictures, actually, the flash is mounted directly on the camera. However, it is not pointed at the subject. It's pointed against either a white wall or a reflector. So that means that that becomes the light source. It's big, beautiful, soft, broad, yet it's still mounted on the camera, TTL. It's basically point and shoot as long as you point that flash at something that's big and white. Now that's very interesting. I never it's heard simple. you never told me that. It's simple. That's very, very interesting. Because it doesn't have to go straight at the subject. It does not. You can actually use the little swivel head on it that comes with it. That's right. That that's I never quite it. understood. Well, why do they even bother? Okay, fine. I didn't know that. And so the next image that comes up, it's a, there's some wonderful characters that you... Yes. Now, what made you shoot these particular images? Well, the one on the left is from the Steve punk festival that happens in Waltham Mass every year and the one on the right 
uh, is actually the, the Florida Birding and Photo Festival. And uh, these are characters. Both of these are with one flash that's off the camera. Uh, it, it's in uh, like a small soft box. So, or it's, it's, it's basically being diffused by this soft box so that you have beautiful quality of light. But getting it off the camera means you now are in control of your highlights and your shadows. So uh, that's what both of these are. Is It's kind of interesting that the two pictures, they're both looking the same way. But um, one's steampunk and the other is a pirate and its daughter. Well, and Mike, this year we have um, a couple dozen characters that are going to be at the conference this year. So it's a good way for really? people to get involved in people photography because it can be intimidating to photograph a person. And a character is going to help make, make people feel more comfortable giving that an attempt to do. Now, so are the characters right. going to be walking around the campus? Some will be walking around. Some will be in designated rooms or in their class. And the good thing about characters is, is it takes away, many people have trouble interacting with Correct. people. The character kind of yes. knows a little bit more how yes, to uh, and knows what themselves. to do. Yes. I, I have to ask you on, um, on the characters, uh, I had a question, but this, this must be a sign of age because it just went through my head. <laughs> I could not possibly remember. But um, oh, I wanted to ask you, when you take the camera off flash, the question that a lot of people have is, how do you hold that flash? Oh, you can have, um, there's two things that you can do. There's an attachment <laughs> that you can put on a light stand, mm -hmm. okay, or you can have what we call a voice-activated <laughs> light stand, a husband, which means yes, that you yes. have another person standing there and you can say, point the flash over there a little bit more, come to the side a little bit, and they can just do it for you. Okay, that sounds like a wonderful, that, that's a reason <laughs> to get married, I'm just saying. Um, now, I understand your, your you're co-presenting with your husband, and what you're going to be talking about, uh, what, what is your program that you're co-presenting? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have two that we're doing. One is called Real People Portraits, and the other one is Portraits Unplugged. Okay, so when we talk about real people portraits, how is that different from the show that you're doing on Portraits with Flash, Simple and Effective? Well, the Flash is really about the Flash. When we talk about real people portraits, you know, everybody has good features and they have some features that we don't want to emphasize. Right. Let me put that politely. So, uh, for example, <laughs> people who have receding hairlines, as we say, follically challenged. <laughs> so um, so if, you're, if you're trying to bring out the best of somebody and you're trying to, uh, to hide the things that, that are not the best, then there's a whole variety of things that you do. And that's a combination of lighting, posing, exposure, tonalities, there's quite a few things that go into that. So it's learning how to look at somebody to analyze their face, to analyze what's going on, and then knowing that, well, if they have a receding forehead, I need to block off a little bit of light, or et cetera. So in this program, we talk about, um, we talk a little bit about everything. People with receding hairlines, people that are, are heavy, people who have bad skin, deep set eyes, a crooked nose, a, a thin face, a, a, you know, a whole variety of different kinds of things. And how do you overcome this? Right? So it's it's corrective pictures. techniques, basically. Let's look at some yeah. pictures from that you brought in. We're going to be looking at, I think, a first of a black and white photo that you're going to be bringing up. And I find it interesting that people are still, you usually think of color, people are still going to black and white. Do you find it? Oh, black and white is very popular. Very oh, yes. It's, it's yes. never going to go out. So the woman on the left, is a, she's a bit heavy. Uh, she's a lovely woman, but she's a bit heavy. So if you notice that she's in dark clothes, the way that she's leaning, the shadows are a little bit darker. It's defining her face a little bit more, so it's taking away the edge of, like if I lit her straight on, she'd be very, very round. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of these techniques together are working to, to make a very flattering picture of her. Um, the businessman is, as we say, follically challenged. So uh, there's beautiful light on him. I've blocked a little bit of the light off of his forehead, but you see on the, on the right side, or, or our right side, the camera right side, you see that there's a highlight there because if I didn't have that highlight, then he would just kind of blend into the background. So that gives a little bit more separation and shows off the shape of the face as well. So I spend a lot of time working with people and helping them relax and learning how to breathe and how to pose and give expressions. And it's, it's really moving people along, taking people along and, and helping them feel as though they're not going to the dentist and getting their teeth pulled. <laughs> it's a much more fun experience. It might, than it that. might feel like that for some of them. But that's that's why that's this whole point of this is to help people overcome that.
Right? So, so I think there's another picture that it, we well, there's, can show. there's some other pictures. There's another picture that we have with a, a couple, a man and a woman in two separate shots that I'd like to see. Now this, I, I love this picture when I initially saw it because uh, I love the expression and it looks very, very natural, especially, well actually for both of them, but I love the woman on the right hand side. So you say things to get them to respond. Yes, <laughs> yes, I do. I do. I have a little. She's known for that. I'm, I'm, yes, I have a. I have a little trick that I'm willing to share with absolutely everybody. Um, and I actually, I'm going to ask you, Jan, to do this with me. I want you to just look at me and say hi. Hi. See, when you say hi, your mouth goes into the perfect position, right? Hi. If you say cheese, you know, it's like so. You say hi, and when you say hi. Everything, it, I just, it just, you did the same thing. Your eyes lit up, you relax, your shoulders go down. Because when you say hi, it's positive. You're connecting with somebody. You have great eyes. You have a great expression. People relax and they feel good. Well, you know, every, every school photographer, they always talk about say cheese. And while you're talking, I'm trying to see my lips. Actually, school photographers don't say that anymore. It's an old, old, old thing that parents tell. And I have a hard time when I photograph kids because the kids have been trained by their parents to say cheese. So they all look like this. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the actress that has big lips? I'm thinking. Angelina that, Jolie. Yeah, <laughs> so the, you're getting all these uh, lip, lip shots. Right. You're, I've never right. considered that. So Wait, You mentioned I, one other thing that was really awesome, and I wanted to bring this up. The speakers that we've picked, you said something like, I'm willing to share. Yes. The people we've right. picked are holding back. They're sharing everything they learn. They want people who come to the conference to learn right. as well. So. So, and we got one of those secrets now. Yeah, so I'm just saying. So, okay. There are no secrets. Okay. Yeah. So going back to that, the pictures, so you got the expression from that that man and the woman yeah. by interacting with them and chatting with them. and Talking to them, asking questions, listening to them, responding to what they say. And I give help in terms of, like, how are they leaning you know, you don't want the body straight into the camera like it's just a box, right? So a little bit of lean. I like the gentleman with the just putting his hand up and mm -hmm. getting. You got to get the hand just right and the head tilt just. Right. It's like, it's detail. It's I always detailed. I always tell my students that a portrait is made or broken in the details. So you have to pay attention to everything. Mm -hmm. You're responsible. Photographer's responsible and, for everything. And, in the you know, the thing about this, the the whole reason for doing a real people portrait is that most of the time, we don't. And normal people don't get to shoot high-end fashion models that are just beautiful and will do whatever. Right. You don't have to do anything. You just hold on to your camera and point it in the right direction. You're going to get a great shot. We have to work with, you know, people friends, like relatives. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we got to make them look great. And, and I think that is a skill that, that is not quite as easy to master. And, right. and Bobby is. The people go That's to the workshops. That's a good distinction. Yeah. Yes, they go to the workshops and they have these beautiful models and all this design, you know, clothes and makeup and hair. And, but that's not when you shoot when you go home. Right. No, By it's the way, not. Those, yeah. those two last pictures, I'm kind of known for the five minute portrait. So both of those pictures were done in about five minutes. Oh, now that's extremely interesting. They were done at the at the PhotoCon LA conference, and we had a line of people coming, waiting to be photographed. They could get a free headshot, and, and in five minutes, Bobby could make. And I did something know. different for each person. I didn't like sit them down and say, "Look here and do this." And, and after, after you did this, weren't you completely exhausted that <laughs> night? Yes, I, that was three days. How do you how three do you have the energy for that? I uh, I have no idea. Because I'm going to take a nap after the show today. We, we call her the Energizer Bunny. She has bunny. a lot of energy. Uh, yeah. um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I just, this um, this real of... portrait session is also a double session. All but three of the sessions at NECCC are just an hour long, but this one's actually two and a half yes. hours long. So people will be able to come see her actually interact, watch them pose, and then there's going to be some post-processing at the end. So they'll be able to see from start to finish how they do real people as And well. you're doing this together. Yes. yes. Yeah. So uh, we'll be d sh demonstrating a live shooting. I'm going to be working the computer. We'll bring it up on a big screen, and uh, I'll also show like uh, simple things that you can do on the fly in Lightroom uh, to enhance the, you know, the skin, put a little glow on the skin, um, uh, enhance the picture a bit in in post. I was telling Lisa I'm thrilled to be having a hotel room at the conference center, and I was going to stay in the room. I'm thinking I might come out now. <laughs> well, you have to get your yeah, picture taken. Yeah, I'm thinking that I might come out of the room. I, you're getting me out. Um, we have another picture of children that's going to come up on the monitor in a second. And I loved when I saw this picture, look at those expressions. Were these five-minute photos? Yes. 
Wow. Yes, this was the, in, this, in the same thing. This was just um, uh, two weeks ago. I did these two weeks ago. So the girl with the blue hair, I mean, if you've got blue hair, you got to show it. So yeah. why well, see anything else? I just you wrapped know? it around her. But the little boy was absolutely adorable. And lots of times when I work with kids, I have them make faces at me because otherwise they sit down and they just try to hold the... You know, and yes, it, it, yes. they get stiff. It's very so I, I take them through a whole series of like making funny faces, making mean faces, making strange faces, and <laughs> and this boy was so adorable. Do you do that with your husband too? Yeah. <laughs> I was just curious. Just curious. She just slaps me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will work. Uh, now you have another one called. Um, you have another class that you're offering together, Portraits Unplugged. Yeah. Now, how is that different from the other, from um, real people portraits? Well, Portraits Unplugged refers to it's all natural light. There's no flash, there's no studio strobes, it's all natural light. It's learning how to see it, find it, place your subject in it. You can use reflectors and diffusers, but there's nothing, it's totally organic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm known for teaching lighting. My nickname is Mistress of Light. So I'm teaching the lighting and I'm te the, the artificial lighting and I'm teaching the natural light. But for this, we're doing this with the cosplay characters on the graffiti wall. Yeah. So, Lisa, It'll would you a tell a little so, bit more about uh, how that works? Yeah, somebody actually posted on Facebook last year. I'm looking outside of the food commons, and there's this graffiti wall, and I'm like, wait, I have to find this graffiti wall. So then yeah. I talked to them and said, this would be a great backdrop for having people And this come is going to be it. participatory. I mean, yes. everybody yes. that yes. signs up for this will be shooting. Yes. It's not just us demonstrating. Right. And that's kind of the cool thing that you're having, you're emphasizing this year a lot at NECCC, is participation. Yes, we want of, to be more active and interactive. Yes, as opposed to just lecture yes. style. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're going to have to move along, unfortunately, because I could spend more time on this. But on the Portraits Unplugged, you, there's a Venice shot that you were going to be seeing. Yeah. And I yeah. understand this one, Best in Show. Um, explain this. Yes. Uh, this is... Um, you know, Venice Carnival, every year, you know, it's right before right before Ash Wednesday and Lent when everybody gives everything up. So this is, you know, Venice invented Carnival, Mardi Gras, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, people come from all over the world dressed in outrageous costumes that some of them they make themselves. A lot of people spend a whole year working on them. And they come out early in the morning because they know that the serious photographers will be there. They come out before dawn and we're out there with lights, but then when the sun comes up and you have the early morning light, and they, they just want to be photographed. Mm -hmm. So this woman, I photographed her a couple of years ago. She's backlit. The costume's beautiful. She knew how to pose. I shot her, and there's a bunch of people around shooting. It's not just one person. There's a lot of photographers around. And we all try to help each other out or respect each other's space. Um, so I worked with her a little bit with the group, and then somebody else moved her. And I looked at what I did, and I took her back, and I did a little bit more. And then I saw something really good. So I went back, and I showed it to her, and I said, when you're done with this group, can you come with me? And I brought her over to this area with the way that everything is out of focus in the background, the backlighting so that she's just glowing, and she's got the gold mask and the gold and white costume. Mm -hmm. So uh, this um, just won the Best in Show from the Plymouth Center of the Arts, Plymouth, Massachusetts. And this is their, it's an international uh, photo annual competition. So, well, that's um, fantastic, yeah, actually. Yeah, I'm very excited about now, that. Now, when you say this is in Venice, you do um, work, you do travel uh, workshops yes, to we do. Venice. we do. Yeah. And so Venice is part of part of many others that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Yes. But I'm just, I want to go on to the uh, next the next image of with natural light. Now, this one I fell in love with. I mean, the, the, the one on the right-hand side, I, I was yes. in love, Lisa. This will be our secret, okay? So how did, this is all natural light. Well, now. all of this is natural light, and part of it is, again, learning how to see it, find it, and put your subject in. So um, where he is, uh, he is underneath, he's actually, this is in New York City, and it's in, um, uh, What's I'm just drew a name on the name of the where the fountain is. Bethesda fountain. It's a Bethesda fountain and and terrace and it's yeah. so it's all under, it's all underneath. There's no light coming from the top, so the light's coming through where all the columns are. So it's gorgeous light, and you turn your subject to place your highlights in your shadows. Mm -hmm. The woman on the left, she's actually I have you know the white canopies that you get for sixty nine bucks that you put in your backyard mm -hmm. to get the sun off. I have a white canopy in my backyard. You take the light off the top. You only get shadows under the eyes and the light comes from above, right? Light comes in and then you can use reflectors to bounce more light in. So in this case, she's basically lit by the light that's bouncing off of my house. And the hair, wow. the hair light is a reflector behind her that's in the sunlight bouncing the light back in. And then 
the white canopy above her blocks off any sunlight from directly from above and just provides just diffusion. It's really simple and easy to do. Beautiful. But people don't people think I shoot natural light all the time, but that doesn't mean they understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's what this class is. About. Well, that's me. <laughs> I, have, I have no clue. I'm real excited that tripod ball head that I bought because it has changed my life. Uh, we don't have all that much time left. I want to make sure we um, touch on a few more points. Um, Lisa, what is the reason why someone would want to go to NECCC? To be inspired, to learn, and to shoot, to interact with other photographers and just kind of have an immersion into photography for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Is this good for all ages? All ages and all different levels. We have beginners. We have advanced people for photo enthusiasts, anybody that basically enjoys taking pictures. Okay. And now I want to talk a little bit about you You love to travel, and you've been to many, many different places. And we saw a picture already from the Venice um, Carnival. Is that? But I'd like to see another image that's going to come up on the monitor. And if you could tell us a little bit about the images. Um, I guess there's there's one. On, there's two coming up. One on the Ve Venice. Uh, it's more of a location shot. I'm not really 100% sure. Here we go. So this okay, is. Okay, this is now. This is talking about my two uh, presentations. I'm doing a uh, one's called Photoshop Tips for to make your travel photos pop. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the image on the left is a straight out of the camera raw file. The image on the right is enhanced with some advanced Photoshop uh, techniques. And I've found at NECCC that uh, the audience is really ready for the more advanced stuff. Uh, so this, uh, that presentation is going to be uh, all of that kind of more advanced stuff. And what's the name of your, your talk that you're doing? Uh, Photoshop tips to make your travel photos pop. Okay. And then so the, going on to the next image that you have, it's also Venice. I believe it's also Venice. No, that's, uh, oh, no. that's in Oman. Oman. That's the, the Royal Opera House of Muscat. Uh, and uh, this was the enhancements, all the enhancements done to this image uh, were done in the raw processing engine, Lightroom or Photoshop. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's simple things you can do to really make your image kind of hit the, uh, the white and black points and really extend the range to maximize it so that you end up with a really image that really sparkles a bit. Mm -hmm. That sounds good to me. And then the next image that we have coming up is... Um... Uh, the next, uh, the other presentation I'm making is uh, portrait retouching for the artistically challenged. And uh, so again, left is the unretouched, uh, the right is the retouched, then the next image, if we just zoom in, you can kind of see uh, the point is to do to, to you know, beauty, uh, to, to make her look really good without making it look fake. Mm -hmm. And it, the idea is to leverage the power of Photoshop uh, so that you can do these kinds of things without any special artistic ability. Um, and so it's, it's for anyone that does portrait photography. Well, I just want to make a comment that I made to Lisa before when Lisa did my headshot. It was not touched up at all, was it? It was <laughs> all natural. Not. Yeah, I, I, I knew that, Lisa. Thank you. And I love it when you lie. So um, <laughs> I truly do. Uh, so now then the another one, uh, we have some more images. I want to make sure now we get some. we're talking about the travel tour. Travel, so. yeah. yeah. I want to make sure we get some more of those travel pictures in. And we and, can go through them quick. Okay, well, we, we don't only have basically, why don't we just... Um, just run Google. through them. Why don't you but just run through them? We only have a Venice, bunch. That's Venice Carnival. Venice. And the next one? Uh, more there's, Venice. There's the canal. Ca the canal. The Grand Canal. The next one? Uh, yeah. That's Africa. This is actually in Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. Next. That's Cuba. I love that. <laughs> I, actually, I love that, too. Yeah, there's a little post-processing involved in just that Just a one. touch, yeah. you Just a little yeah. bit, yeah. The next one? Very effective. Uh, and that's Turkey. That's What's in that? Cappadocia. What's Cappadocia. that um, Alfred Hitchcock movie? This the Birds. The Birds. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what this is actually called Pigeon Valley. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the Alfred Hitchcock movie. So you do a lot of photo travel and workshops that you yeah. take people on. I on the next there's one more? I don't, I don't know. I, no, maybe not. I there you go. Oh, okay, that's, I'm sorry. That's me and Mark. Okay, yeah. very, very nice. Um, so you do a lot of photo travel. You're going to be speaking at um, Amherst, NECCC, and I understand that you also have a variety of books published and DVDs out, and we had a, were having a discussion earlier on this particular book, Skin, which is not an image um, that I would 
normally pick for this particular one because it's not about tattoos. No. <laughs> and and that's a, that would be my thought. What is this book about? Well, the full title, if you read the subtitle, it's The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. Well, this looks like an absolutely terrific book. And I understand it's a bestseller? Yeah, that, that has been a bestseller. And it's, it's a, a recommended book for uh, every photographer's library. Well... And if you buy this, just don't worry about the, the title. And then this one is, um, you have this out? Yes, I, uh, posing and directing. Um, I found that the questions that I get almost in every single class is, I don't know how to pose somebody, I don't know how to talk to them. So this is something that I have I've published myself, and it's available as a DVD, but I also it's available online because a lot of people don't use DVDs anymore. So it's downloadable. Yes, yes, yes. Now, um, I'm not quite sure how much time we have left. I'm going to wait for a rock. Um, but I just want to also mention that you have some free tutorials out on YouTube. Yes, I have a whole YouTube channel. If you just search for Lee Varis, you'll find it. How do you spell your last name? V as in Victor, A-R-I-S as in Sam. So and the way you help me remember your last name. It's like Paris with a V. <laughs> that works for me. And you have, um, you can have access to your free material that are available. Yeah, on the YouTube channel, uh, it's all free. I have an online uh, kind of uh, school with downloadable courses that you can purchase from my website, which is just varus.com. Okay, and then so now, what is your contact information? Um, on my website is bobbylane.com, and that's B-O-B-B-I. -B -B there's no E, there's no Y, B-O-B-B-I. And uh, that's it, bobbylane.com, and you can find out just pretty much everything. I, I should say that we have just, uh, we have started a website for us jointly called bobbyandleesphotoadventures.com. Um, it's up and live. We haven't really fully populated yet, but it will be in the future have all of our workshops, travel tours, everything that we're doing, anything about us. We have the okay. upcoming tours on there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense there. to have one, because you are married. We, and and, 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 and we're yes, doing we are. this together. Yes. 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 And Lisa, what is your website? Photography by LisaandTom.com. Now you have a book coming out, The Frog Whisperer. Yeah, it's coming out um, any day now, so it's about frogs. It's also a general book, not just for photographers, but it's got different stories and portraits of frogs and some of the stories. There's a chapter in there for photography, but it's not a photography book. And it's a phenomenal, you're phenomenal with frogs. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Phenomenal. And your contact information? It's um, www.photographybylisaandtom.com, and then also for the conference, www.neccc.org. And where's Tom? Because you said Lisa and Tom. Is oh. he, he has that day job. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you have to watch the other video oh, for Tom. okay, fine. <laughs> so um, if you forget any of that information, you can always rewind on your DVD. Or, But you, what you can do is you can always contact me, Jan Doyle, at jmdteach at comcast.net. And if you forget that, too, you can always call the studio, and they'll uh, set forward the information to me. I want to thank you for coming on the show. We covered a lot of information in a short period of time, and I'm really looking forward to NECCC. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks thank for you. having us.